If you make Instagram carousels and you make websites using Webflow, the web designer in me was just thinking, man, we spend a ton of energy and time putting these carousels together on social networks. Why don't we bring some of that energy and fun stuff back to our home base, to our website? And so in this tutorial, I made a clone. And this video just shows you how to use it. And that's about it. All right, so let's go. Hey guys, so if you just clone the project, this is what it should look like in the designer. If it looks a little different, just let me know because this is the first time that I'm creating a project clone. And so I'm just kind of curious if uh, little things uh, are, show up uh, differently. But let me just walk you from top to bottom, uh, sort of just explain what's going on, and then we'll do a deep dive into the Instagram carousels and how you can change them. So here, just looking, as you scroll down, you'll see that nothing is moving. Everything kind of just stays as is. The uh, You cannot see the entire Instagram uh, carousel. So this is a setup where there should be 10 uh, images, but you cannot see all 10. Uh, the only thing that is moving are these two uh, images right here. These are animated GIFs uh, that I put in one of my carousels. Um, and then you have this uh, menu that kind of just, this nav menu that just kind of like sticks where it is. But as you, create, as you create the, uh, or hit the preview button, then you'll see that everything is moving uh, just as in the example. So what I'll do is just explain what's going on. And by the way, I just left this menu up here. I just thought it might be cool just to see a, a different way of just putting a call to action in mobile devices. And so you just see how I set it up and maybe it gives you some ideas for the future. Okay, so assuming that you make Instagram carousels, you create a bunch of images and then eventually you upload them in a certain order just to make sure that they, uh, they line up and they slide together into a nice story. And so I just thought, well, why don't we just replicate that on our websites? And so what these are, I'll just scroll down this one because we can see more images, is just basically, it's just image next to image. And so you can just change these out and you'll have a story. So that's kind of you know, how it would work. So let me just undo those. So let me explain a little bit about the structure and how it's set up. So here, uh, so you have a section and then here you just have a container. This is just to for this this stuff right here, just a just a quick little uh, blurb of what you're looking at. And then you'll have the carousel container. So that's the part that's actually the Instagram carousel. So what the way that it's set up is inside you have a uh, carousel frame uh, which is set to overflow. So this high, this is like an imaginary box that anything inside, it's not gonna let it uh, expand or, or be visible. And the reason that's important is right below that is I have this carousel wrapper. And you see how it's the width is 3000. So that seems like it's really, really long. Because I use this, and I have this to set to overflow uh, hidden, that's why we don't see a, a width of 3000 pixels. That's important because on mobile devices or even our websites, we just don't want people scrolling, having to scroll left and right. So you'll see here that by clicking, if I'm on the carousel frame and I click uh, here to show make visible, now this is something new that I learned uh, in this uh, while making this. If you hold the shift button, this is basically allowing you to scroll left and right. So I'm on a desktop, so I don't have a I don't have a mouse or anything that I can scroll. I'm sorry, a, a trackpad. And you see, now I can see everything. I can kind of go, I can scroll left and right. And so this is important for when you want to change out the rest of the images. This is how you can get access to them. So you might, because when you just open this up, you'll be like, hey, wait a second, I can only see the first five images, I can't see the rest. So this is what you want to do, is you want to go to the carousel frame and make sure that the, you change the overflow to visible. And then when you're done, you just put it back to invisible or hidden, sorry. And then there you go. And so that should just give you an idea of how to change out images uh, for your for your, uh, for your your carousels. Now you might be wondering, okay, so how do I change the interactions? Where is that happening? So in the carousel container, you'll see here the lightning bolt. And so here you just go and I have two set up. I have one set up for the carousel scroll. So that's for these these that go all the way across. And then for up here, I have one called carousel scroll inline. And when you look at these, you'll notice that the timing is just a little different. Um, basically you have to, I don't know if there's like a science to this, but 
Anyway, I just kind of messed around with these values and then found that one works a little bit better. And so you can just change these and you'll probably change these depending on how big you want to make these images. And so let me talk about how to change the images now. So when you want to change the images, uh, basically here's the calculation that I set up. So you have, let me go to the carousel frame, uh, the carousel wrapper. So, so here's the calculation that I set up. So the carousel wrapper right now is 3000 and then each image is defined as 300. And the reason, the, the, the idea is that 3, 300 times 10 gets you 3000. And that's important to define the image here because I noticed that with my animated GIFs, I guess they because they're a little different than just the image, when I didn't have this set, it was just, you would have the, this thing, like nothing, there's uh, images that are different sizes or, or something's going on. So just by setting this with a number, then that worked out great. Now let's say I want the images to be smaller. Uh, let's say 200. So I would just think just to go here and just change it. And that looks good, but you'll see as, as I scroll in the, pre in, the, uh, in the preview mode, I have this border that goes here. And so that's not good. So what I need to do is I need to change the calculation for the content the carousel, no, oh, I'm sorry, for the carousel wrapper. And so if I put this to 2000, so 200 times 10, now when I look at this, now you see that it goes along the edge. So this is when you have Instagram carousels and t with 10 slides. When you have fewer slides, uh, so let's say you have five, what you have to do is you have to change the calculation. So here, let's say the image is 300, but what I have to do is I have to change the carousel uh, wrapper. I have to basically do 300 times five, and then that gives me 1500. And that's how I can ensure that these, these borders that I set up, they'll always show up correctly. All right, so with that, that was just a quick sort of overview of what's going on, and hopefully this is helpful, just give you some ideas can imagine that there might be some questions. Uh, so go ahead, let me have them, and then I'll just try to keep on improving sort of the instructions along the way. All right, thanks for tuning in, and hope this is helpful, and let me know if you end up using it. All right, thanks. So hey guys, I hope this clone is helpful, and this video kind of explained a little bit of how to use it. So if you have any questions, just let me know. This was my first uh, clone, and hopefully many more to come. So have a great day, and let's get back to it. Bring that energy.